What's up, everybody? Good morning. Happy Monday. It is the start of another week, and we've got some more head coaching candidates to take a look at here. And this is one who has actually been a head coach before, actually had some degree of success as a head coach, but uh, things happened. Things happened that were not so great, and now he's not a head coach, and people are going to be wondering, does this guy deserve a second shot as a head coach? We're talking about Brian Flores here, and obviously when you get down to guys like the Brian Flores is and the Adam Stenovich is of the world, you're really starting to get to the end of it here. And believe me, there are only a few more guys that I'm going to be looking at in this series. But I do want to really dive into Brian Flores here because while there is some extracurricular stuff with him that is a little bit concerning... The actual production of his career as just a coach is pretty good, in my opinion. So we should at least talk about it. And maybe the answer we arrive to is no, but we should still talk about it. So 43 years old when the season starts next year, so still young, still has a long career in front of him. He spent a year in Minnesota as the defensive uh, coordinator in 2023, and I think he did a really good job. He got the most he could out of a very limited group of players by basically adapting this crazy blitz like a maniac strategy, and it worked about as well as you could hope. They were 13th in points allowed, slightly above average. EPA per play was negative .019, which was pretty much average, so probably couldn't have done much better. Now, when you play like that, of course things are going to go wrong sometimes, but he did something that Pete Carroll never had the courage to do. He looked at his defense and said, we're going to give up some stuff. If we're going to give stuff up, I'd rather give stuff up because I'm trying really hard to not give stuff up rather than just let it happen, right? If we're going to give up points and give up touchdowns and give up big plays, better doing it because I'm doing everything I can to stop it rather than just laying back and letting it happen. So... I appreciate that. That creativity is so important. But uh, that's what he's got most recently in his resume. The year before that, he was a senior defensive assistant and linebacker coach on the Pittsburgh Steelers for one year. Now, the Steelers had a good defense in terms of points allowed, 20.4. Not so good in EPA. They had a positive EPA per play allowed, 0.021, which was 23rd. Not very good at all. Um, and some of the linebackers he coached, not great marks in his resume. Now, T.J. Watt's great, but T.J. Watt was great before um, uh, Brian Flores got there. It's not like Brian Flores made T.J. Watt great. He does deserve some credit for getting Alex Highsmith to the place where he is now, where he's a really good edge rusher. But um, Miles Jack and Devin Bush Jr. and Robert Spillane are the other main linebackers he coached this year. And he really couldn't salvage the Devin Bush Jr. Exper experiment Miles Jack is one of the most confounding players in all of football. I don't know what to make of him. And Robert Spillane's kind of a jag to me. So not great results in Pittsburgh, admittedly. But um, there, there's uh, I'll give him some credit for the Alex Highsmith thing. How about, how about that? Let's uh, focus on that for a second. Okay, so then we get to his tenure as the Miami Dolphins head coach, and it was not bad. That first year, they were tanking. They were 32nd in points allowed, 32nd in EPA per play allowed. 2019 was just a complete bust. They won a few games because of Tannehill. But straight up, this uh, this Miami Dolphins team was not trying to win for most of the season. And then Ryan Tannehill swooped in there and was like, no, we're going to try to win games. In 2020, things were headed in the right direction. The Dolphins doubled their win total, 10-6. and 21.1 points per game allowed, which was top six. Their EPA, top seven. EPA per play allowed, top seven, so the defense was really good. They were on the right track. The next year, they took a little bit of a step back. They were still a winning team, 9-8. and eight. Their defense jumped all the way back to 16th, but you can actually see their points per game allowed actually only went up by 0.8. So that's actually kind of amusing, right? Um, that, that's the COVID year for you. In the COVID year, it was hard to score. So in 2021, things started to correct. Still a really good defense by EPA, though, and then things got kind of acrimonious between the Dolphins and Flores. They parted ways. This is not something that I look at and go, this is a bad head coach, though. <clears throat> I look at this and I go, this could be a good head coach, and there's just some stuff going on with him that 
was kind of out of the field of play. Now, I will say this, there are some stories about Flores that I really don't like from this time, like the way he treated Tua and the way he kind of went out of his way to undermine Tua and sabotage him almost because he really didn't like Tua. I don't like that. But results-wise, there's something here for sure. Um, basically, that's most of the stuff that really matters when it comes to Brian Flores, Minnesota, Pittsburgh, Miami. Because before then, he was mostly, mostly a um, New England Patriot, Bill Belichick understudy, spent a long time in that system holding various jobs. And, I mean, the Belichick tree, l let's face it, not a lot of great head coaches have come from there. But I figure it can't be a bad thing to pick up knowledge from the great one. Linebacker coach for three years during two Super Bowl wins. Um, Kyle Van Noy, Alandon Roberts, Donta Hightower, Jamie Collins, Rob Ninkovich, Marquise Flowers. Some pretty notable names in that group. I'm a big fan of Alandon Roberts myself. That's the guy he actually took with him to Miami. Um, not all pros. There are no Ray Lewises or Bobby Wagners here, but good players for sure. Uh, he, for four years before that, during another Super Bowl win in a, I think a Super Bowl, I think that, no, 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 yeah, a AFC Championship game losses, safeties coach, Patrick Chung, Devin McCourty, Steve Gregory were the safeties, Devin McCourty, um, one of the better safeties of his era, Patrick Chung was a nice, fun player as well, so we continue to see some pretty impressive stuff in his ledger. Going back to 2011, he was a defensive assistant in New England. And they had a good defense, uh, well, average defense that year, 15th in the league, 21.4 points per game allowed. So we've uh, got a decent amount of work he did under Bill Belichick. But again, we've learned that working under Bill Belichick is no guarantee of you being able to be a successful head coach when you get out of there. So Flores has actually done one of the better jobs of Belichick understudies just by virtue of the fact that he went to Miami and was able to have two winning seasons and kind of turn a really bad team around there. It didn't work out long term, and Miami's in a much better place now with McDaniel than they were with uh, B B Flores. But he did lay a little bit of a foundation here that I think they're still benefiting from. So Brian Flores, that's basically the resume. It's pretty short. He's a relatively young guy. I don't know about this one, right? Like, there's some stuff here that I like, but I'm aware of the baggage. There is some baggage here with uh, Brian Flores that if you bring him in, you're going to have to deal with. And you're obviously not going to give him personnel control, so what if there's another situation where you draft the guy that he doesn't like as much and he has to deal with coaching that guy? Is it going to be like with Tua? Because again, I want to stress this. It's one thing to not want Tua and, and instead want to draft Justin Herbert in the draft. That's fine. But it didn't seem like he handled it very well when he didn't get what he wanted, and that's part of the reason why he got pushed out. And say whatever you want to say about Tua, he's certainly not a great quarterback right now. But we've seen that you can work with him and get really good results. And Flores was unwilling to do that. So, I don't know. I, I think there's a conversation that needs to be had concerning Flores. But ultimately, there are not enough openings and too many candidates for me to feel like this is the best we can do. But I want to hear what you guys think about this one. This one's uh, kind of a tough nut to crack. All right, I'll see you guys later, Go Hawks. We're going to do another head coaching candidate later today. We are getting near the end of my list. And when it's all over, we're going to kind of wrap everything up in one video. And I'll give my overall thoughts on this crop of potential head coaching candidates.